Korea. Our president has said that you're backing an evil guy there. He said Assad is an evil guy. Do you believe that? Do um, believe in what? That Assad is an evil man? Yes. An evil guy? Uh, You've got to ask the other leaders who have communicated with Assad. It was more often in Europe after being elected than in Russia. It is not President Assad whom we are protecting there. We are protecting the Syrian statehood. We don't want there in Syria to be a situation similar to that in Libya or in Somalia or in Afghanistan. And Afghanistan NATO has been present for many years, but this situation is not changing for the better. We want to preserve the Syrian statehood. And on the basis of uh, resolving this fundamental issue, we would like them to move towards settling the Syrian issue through political means. Yes, probably everyone is there to blame for something, but let's not forget that were it not for inactive interference from outside, the civil war would probably would not have broken out. What is President Assad being accused of recently? We know he is accused about using chemical weapons, but there, are no, there is no evidence to support that whatsoever. Right after the incident, we suggested that an inspection should be carried out at the airbase from which allegedly the aircraft of President Assad had taken off carrying chemical weapons. If chemical weapons had been used, then those weapons would have been loaded onto the aircraft and the cutting edge analyzing equipment would have detected that. But they refused to conduct this kind of inspection. So they're talking a lot, but not doing much. We suggested that an inspection should be carried out at the place where the strike took place. They're saying it's too dangerous. Why is it dangerous if uh, the strike was against the good part of the opposition? No, they say it's too dangerous. Uh, there is a representative of Iraq here whom we welcome and Iraqi Kyrgyzstan. The militants used chemical weapons and the world community recognized it. So they know that the militants there have got chemical weapons. But according to the OPCW, Syria has destroyed its stocks of chemical weapons. You see, if pretexts are created without any real willingness to look into the matter, it's not going to lead us anywhere. Let's talk substantively. Did Assad make mistakes? Yes, probably a lot of them. But those who oppose him, are the angels who is murdering people and executing children, beheading people? Should we support those people who do that, you know, that together with our American counterparts, we had discussions uh, ad infinitum about different territories where we should perform strikes or we shouldn't. They were telling us that there were territories uh, where we shouldn't uh, perform strikes because uh, the opposition, the good opposition was mixed with the Anasra Front. Well, in that case, they've got to separate the bad guys from the good guys of the opposition. Should we wait for these terrorists to come to our country? No, we're not going to wait for that. Let's find an agreement. Prime Minister is nodding an agreement. India is always facing the threat of terrorism. This is not just a far-fetched problem. 4,000 people from the Russian Federation, according to our estimates, are in Syria, and around uh, 4,500 from the CIS countries. And this is a real threat we are facing, because some of them try to get back, and some of them do get back. We launched our operation in Syria because we knew 
what all of this would result in. You shouldn't try labeling people. We've got to work together substantively, and we're willing to engage in this work, but we need a constructive approach on your side. So, we know that Assad has used chemical weapons before, and you know Russia entered into an agreement in 2013 to, to stop that. I mean, Russia acknowledged that in 2013 when it acknowledged to, to try to stop that by Assad. The only question is whether he launched the chemical weapons attack that happened a couple of months ago. And I just want to ask you, press you a little further on this, do you, because we all saw the video of the suffering, dying children, and that was the reason that President Trump dropped the bomb. Do you deny, because Assad d denies that those tapes are real, it's, he's purporting to tell us not, not to believe our lying eyes. Do you believe those tapes are fake? First, when President Obama and I agreed to work together to destroy chemical weapons in Syria, we assumed that Syria had it, but we never recognized that Assad had used it. So please be more precise. Secondly, as for those people who were killed or who suffered because of the use of weapons, including chemical weapons, this is false information. As of now, we are absolutely confident that this is just a provocation. President Assad didn't use chemical weapons. All of this was orchestrated in order to stage him. To, to accuse him. Moreover, our intelligence services have got information that in other districts of Syria, not far from Damascus, there were plans to reproduce this scenario, and we made these plans publicly. Those who had been planning this action uh, thought it better not to engage in these actions. If, if I could just follow up on that, though, because the, the bodies of the victims were autopsied at Turkey's uh, and Dara Forensic Med Medicine Institution. The autopsies were witnessed by officials from the World Health Organization and from the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. And they concluded that the victims were attacked with sarin gas. Are, are we really to believe that the whole thing was staged, that everybody was in on it? The, the World Health Organization, the Forensic Medicine Institution, the Organization for, for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons? The answer is very simple, and you know it. Yes, Zarin could have been used by someone, but not by Assad. It could have been used by someone in order to accuse President Assad. So we have to understand who is to blame. And Otherwise, if there is no true investigation, it's only going to play into the hands of uh, those who orchestrated it. I'd like to ask you a question. Why didn't everyone go right away to inspect the air base to the spot where chemical weapons allegedly had been used? Why didn't they want to go to see the aircraft that had been allegedly used to perform this strike? The answer is very simple, because they were afraid that everything, the truth, would come to light. What you are telling me doesn't convince me of anything. It just persuades me that we'd better not engage in tag of war there or speculate. We've got to pull our efforts together to counter real threats. And we know what these real threats are. The US is very far Yes, there was an explosion there. People suffered, which we offer our condolences. But we also know what terrorist is all about. We have seen its manifestations. And no one should try to use terrorists to address short-term political interests, even though there are attempts at that. Yes, there are attempts at using terrorists against, say, Assad. Why use them? Because no one else would fight. I do not think it's worthwhile using these terrorists today, because tomorrow it's going to cost you a lot. When Al-Qaeda was created in Afghanistan to fight against the Soviet Union, they didn't know that it would strike the U.S. on 9-11. 
We've got to think about negative rep.